Alright guys, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to um, clean and rebuild the K-Fun. I'll talk a little bit about this mod. Uh, this is mostly from my buddy Matt, who is going to be quitting smoking. Alright, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and go over what we're going to use here. First we're going to have our needle nose pliers. Um, I'm using the E-Fest 2500 mod battery. It's 35 amps, so it's nice and safe, especially if you're building with a K-Fun, because you can't go below a 0.6 ohm on a K-Fun anyway. We're going to use our scissors to trim our cotton once we put it in. Our needle nose pliers to position and also clean, um, pinch our coils to make sure once they get heated that they're heating evenly. A pair of fingernail clippers so that we can cut the wire as we're using it. Flathead screwdriver, I'm going to use this to actually wrap the coil on, and then I'm also going to use it to tuck in the, uh, the cotton. And then we're going to be using some 28 gauge wire that I got from some of the buddies at the local shop. And I'm going to be sending all this to Matt so he'll be able to do it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a look at the K-Fun. Alright, so the K-Fun, obviously. Take it off the mod. Very short, sweet, and simple. We're going to talk about the mod really quick because this is kind of a unique mod. It does not have a spring, it's magnetic. So you'll notice that the button here is at the bottom. The button literally just falls out in your hand. So when you're getting ready to put this together, you want to make sure that this contact side is up. The other part of the magnet actually attaches to the bottom of your battery. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Pretty simple. All right. So obviously how this magnetic switch works is it repels against each other, or they repel against each other, so that when you push the button, it pushes the battery up, it makes contact with the atomizer, therefore completing the circuit, making it fire. Now obviously this way is the wrong way, because you don't want them to stick together. So when you put it on your battery, you just want to make sure that you're sticking it, so I'll flip it over, so that they're actually repelling. And obviously you can't feel this because it's a video, but at this point, you, this is where they will repel against each other. So I'm going to put it on my battery just like that. I'm going to put this part into the mod. Bottom. Top. Bot okay, anyway. Alright, so let's put this in here. A pinky through the bottom. Slide it all the way down until it's at the very, very bottom. Yeah. So, nice and easy. Battery. You'll know you did it right. Because when you try to push it, it'll spring back up. If you push it in and it sticks, then you need to flip your magnet over. Just screw it together. All right. The important thing to know about this mod is that when you put it on your atomizer, the part that actually makes contact, which is this part right here, you want to make sure that it is will make contact. You can take your little flathead screwdriver and you can loosen that screw up nice and easy if it's not sticking out enough. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the mod itself. 
So since we're good to go with that, let's go ahead and let's take apart the K-Fun itself. Now, when you're getting ready to clean your coils, which I do about every three days, and replace the cotton. Don't try to use pliers on these. Don't try to manhandle them because you can crack them. You can strip the threads. You want to be careful. When you take this off, you'll probably learn the hard way that this little O-ring in here, you want to make sure that that O-ring is still in there because if it falls out or if it's on the chimney part here, when you put it back together, juice is going to leak out of the bottom air hole. So make sure that that's in there. Let's go ahead and next take off the actual tank part. Very simple. And next we're going to take off the chimney part. As you can see, I have been using this, so it is nice and nasty and dirty. Those two little Phillips head screws right there. So we're gonna use this little screwdriver for right here. We're gonna take those out. Remember, you're not manhandling these things. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. There's our coil. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on another coil. I'm going to rinse this off underwater. Of course, I'm going to take the atomizer part off. All right. As you can see, I cleaned it all up. It's all nice and clean. We don't have to worry about it. Use a little bit of an old toothbrush just to kind of clean it out. Make sure it looks nice. I also clean the tube. And normally before, if I'm going to do a build, I'll go ahead and clean it. But I wanted to show what it looked like when it was dirty. Because most of this is for instructional purposes for a friend of mine who is new to vaping. So let's go ahead and get ready to um, start wrapping the coil. Because I have butterfingers and I drop things and lose things, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on here so that I um, <clears throat> don't lose it. So, all right. So let's start with a little bit of wire here. This is 28 gauge Canthal wire. Simple, safe, easy to work with. Now for this coil, all I need is about a 10 inch piece. You can even use six inches. I'm gonna have a lot left over, but I'm not worried about it because wire is super cheap. I'm gonna use these high tech cutting devices. So go ahead and clip that off, which cuts very easy. my little wire back in there so I don't get it unraveled. Move that off to the side. All right. So now when you want to do a, a build, you want to make sure your wire is nice and straight. Now, as you can see, this one is wrapped around a card because I carry way too much wire around with me in my little kit. So I keep them on card so I don't have too much and they don't get all. This one is kinked up. So what I'm going to do before I even wrap my coil is I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out with a screwdriver just like you would anything else. Nice and easy like you did the old ribbons when you were decorating things as a kid. Perfect. Again this is 28 gauge so it's very easy to work with. You'll notice 
now it's nice and straight. Okay. So let's take this screwdriver, because this is what we're going to wrap it around. Now as you can see on these posts, we have to wrap the wire around the screw after we make our coil. So I want to make sure I have a little bit left over. So I'll usually leave about that much. And for this screwdriver, it's just a little laptop screwdriver that I have. I'm going to do nine wraps. So what I want to do is I want to hold it in place and I want to get it as close as possible. And then I want to keep them tight as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The important thing to know here on this, on the K-Fun, is that most coils I would wrap all the way around, but I want these both leads on the same side. Now I'm going to hold this because as you can see, when you first wrap it, it kind of looks like shit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers. And I'm going to hold the coil. Oop. If I did it on camera, it'd probably be easier. I'm going to hold the coil with my fingers. And I'm going to grab this top lead with my needle nose pliers. And then I'm just going to pull it. So you'll feel the tension come out of it. I'm not trying to manhandle it. I just want it to be nice and tight. No, it's still going to look a little bit like shit. I normally torch these so that when, so that they are nice and tight before I put it on. But in this case, Matt doesn't have a torch, so I'm going to show him how to do it without torching. Again, now the important thing is you want the leads on both the same side. So as you can see, the coil is going to set coil is going to sit on the K-Fun like this with these leads wrapped around the wire. So I want to make sure that they're like this and not like this. Again, like bottom, top, bottom, top. Okay, anyway. Um, so you want them both on the bottom. Okay. Very simple. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach this to this. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so I can get a little closer to the table. I'm going to put this coil. See that hole right there? The hole is the airflow. I want the coil directly over the airflow, but I don't want it on it and I'll show you what I'm seeing when I lift it up a little bit we want to lift it up a little bit off the coil so I'm going to take one wire hold it in place I'm just going to wrap it around a little bit and it's actually very very simple to do this once I have it wrapped around I'm going to tighten down the screw Now the reason why I'm leaving the screwdriver inside the coil while I'm tightening it down is because the wires will move. And I don't want to make the coil look any worse than it already does because it wasn't torched. So I'll take the other lead, pull it around, nice and snug. Put that in the light so you can see it. Just right around it. And 
tighten down the screw. Again, I'm not trying to manhandle it. Alright, so you want to see what a shitty coil looks like? That looks horrible. Because we still need to make sure that we get it all tightened up. And you'll see the difference once we get it all wrapped up. See how it's touching the base? That's what we call no bueno. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my screwdriver in here. Very easily. Just lift up on it. Now the airflow, now the air has a chance to flow underneath the coil. Yeah. Wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is, now other mechanical mods, they have a lock. This one does not have a lock. So you want to be careful that when you're about to do this next step, that you take your finger completely off the button. What we're going to do is we're going to fire the mod. This part will start to turn red. And then we'll go ahead and take our finger off the button before we pinch it with our handy dandy little tweezers. If you touch the button while you're doing this, it'll make a nice little spark and um, short the coil and it'll immediately burn right through the wire and you'll be starting over again. Now I use an ohm checker, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send him my SVD so that we can cheat because it's important to know what the ohms are on this coil for resistance. Now this coil should ohm out pretty good. It's pretty safe. It's 20. It's got plenty of wraps and um, I've been doing it long enough just so that I know, but for instructional purposes, I'm going to put this on the SVD so that you can see. So let me go ahead and grab that. All right, so now that we have our SVD, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and turn it on. The way that you're going to turn it on is you're going to hit this button three times. One, two, three. So this is what I'm going to do. One, two, three. And even for a jar head, that pretty much tells me that it's on. Screw it right onto the top. Now, there are a few things you need to know just to double check and make sure before you before you test the resistance you want to make sure that nothing is touching anything else and that the wires that the insulator is not touching or anything like that so what you're going to do is the first thing that you'll check because you will find out the hard way if you don't and you make the mistake is you want to make sure that this part right here that this block is not touching. That screw that we loosened up on the bottom in the beginning to show you how to bring the screw down enough to where it makes contact with the battery, it holds this block in place. So if you loosen it too much, what will happen is you will see this gap right here in the middle, this will twist. And when this block twists and that touches, you're creating a direct short. So when you touch the battery, you'll know it because it'll immediately get hot. It's fairly dangerous because it can cause the battery to vent. Now before we test this beautiful, awesome looking coil here that looks like shit, um, we will go ahead and make sure we clip off any of these extra wires. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these off and this off. high-tech cutting devices and it should be all cleaned up nothing should be touching and you know, we're gonna make sure that that is lifted up off of the deck just a little bit there. 
Now we will continue to straighten this out and work with this coil. It will eventually look better. Just right now, we're just going to get it centered. And up. Now I can be fairly confident that this is not going to go not going to be shorting out. All right. So this is probably going to be a little bit high. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus button and the minus button at the same time. It's going to go ahead and tell us what the resistance is on this coil. I would like to shoot for about a 1.6, but I think this is probably going to come closer to a 1.9 or a maybe even a 2.0. So let's hold both of these buttons at the same time. 2.0. Now this is still fine. It's safe. I'm still going to give a decent vape. Um, I prefer myself a little bit lower, but we'll go ahead and work with this and see what we got. Now, if you want it to be lower, what you would do is while you're wrapping the coil, you just do one or two less wraps. Like you would only do seven wraps or you might only even do six, depending on what you want. Remember on the K fun, what you want to make sure is, you see your insulator right here. This is that little plastic piece right underneath the bottom. You want to make sure that if you get this thing below six ohms, that will start to melt. If it melts, well, pretty much just trash the K-Fun. Or you can go ahead and buy a rebuildable kit, but they're so cheap. Sometimes it's easier to just buy a new one because it's going to short out. And then it could possibly cause your battery to vent, and it will be dangerous. Let's turn this baby off. Now let's go ahead and attach it to our mod. Put my cap back on. Protrudes just enough to make contact with the battery. Mine. Nice and snug. I'm not trying to manhandle it. Fire button. Remember, fire button, let go, then squeeze. Now, as I hold the fire button here, this should begin to go ahead and heat up and turn red. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for it to start turning red from the inside out. So we'll start with this. This coil is a pretty crappy coil when you first put it in, but you can tighten them up and make them look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the fire button. Let it start heating up. There we go. All right. And I'm going to let go of the fire button and then squeeze it. And I'm just going to hold it for a little bit. Notice when I'm squeezing it, I'm not manhandling it. See that's a little bit crooked? Feel free to twist it straight a little bit. Because you want it to be straight. Because so, your wick is going to run through the hole. And then lay right down here in these channels here. Alright, so now let's go ahead and do it again. See it's already looking better. Close most of the gaps in there. Still off the deck, but I'll probably lift it just a little bit more by inserting my screwdriver. Nice and easy because I do not want to fuck up the coil that I just built. Nice and easy. I'll lift it up just a little bit. I want it off of the air hole. And screw this baby back out. Or slide it back out.
Now let's get back to heating it up and pinching it and making it look a little bit prettier. Please, for the love of God, don't touch this part while you're hitting the firing button. It will remind you why hot things hurt. Heat it up. Pinch. Heat it up. Pinch. Heat it up. So now it's glowing nice and evenly. From the inside out. One last little pinch there, just kind of hold it in place. Remember, I'm not manhandling this because if I pinch it too hard, it'll cause the coil to overlap. And now we can see that coil looks nice and even, straight across, no overlaps. Now for the easiest part of this whole setup, we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert the wick. Many people use a billion different things. They claim about this and that, blah, 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 blah. Boil your cotton, this cotton, that cotton. I use 100% organic cotton, which I'm going to be sending him so he doesn't have to try to figure out where to get it from. You need a very, very little bit of cotton. Like this much cotton is probably a good six month supply. I got my 100% organic cotton at Whole Foods, which is the local hippie store. You can see very, very little bit. Now, I'm not going to twist it. I'm going to just roll it between my fingers. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it nice and thin without compressing it. So that it'll slide through the coil. Now, while I'm sliding this through the coil, if it's too tight, it will choke the juice or choke the coil out and not let the juice properly wick up to the coil. Alright, so I want it to be snug, but not tight. Again, I'm not being a he-man, I'm just rolling it nice and evenly. Alright, so let's go ahead and make sure we have a good focus on this. Nice and easy. Stick it in one side, pull it out the other. See, just nice and easy. It should be snug. You shouldn't be able to see any gaps. It should fit in there nice and easy. All right, so now what we're going to do is, since this coil is, this wick is basically going to lay down into these channels, I'm gonna make sure that they stop right here about this deck. What I have found to work for me is, if I take my scissors and I'm looking from the top, if I cut them evenly right here on the edge, if I'm looking down, that usually is about perfect so that they lay in the channel nice and easy. Another high-tech cutting device. And uh, kids, please don't run with these. Not that I care that you might get hurt, but somebody else might. I'm going to cut this right at the edge of this. For my friends in the military, though these are also known as IP trimmers. They work phenomenal. Nice and clean. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be pushing these down so that they lay right here and kind of tuck them in a little bit because see these threads this is where the chimney is going to be and I don't want it to be all over that so now I'm going to take my juice I'm going to put just a little bit on here what it does is it makes it a little bit easier to manage it won't frizz out on you or anything like that a 
Cotton will soak it up pretty well. Hence why it makes such good wick. Take your time with this because if you just gob it on, it's going to pour all over your hand and the mud and everything else. And it's a, kind of a bitch to clean up. Although it comes off really easy with water since it is water based. All right, so I'm going to take this and just kind of use my screwdriver to kind of tuck it down and hold it in place. Oh, nice and easy. As with everything else, there's a million different ways to do it. Some people put on the chimney, stuff in the cotton, and shove it down in the hole. Whatever works for you. Uh, this works for me. Nothing on the threads. And we are good to go. I'm going to take my chimney. I'm going to screw it back on. Nice and snug. Now just to make sure, um, sometimes as you are um, putting these together, if you're not careful, what can happen, not that I have ever done this, I read it on the internet somewhere, that when you wrap these wires around these screws, sometimes what will happen is, is you might have a little bit sticking out. If you, if you have any wire sticking out of here, when you screw this chimney down, you can touch this. If it touches this, then what will happen is it will short out and it will burn a hole in your wire. All right. So now what I'm going to do is now that everything's together pretty much except for the tank and the top, I'm just going to test it to make sure that it works. Oh. Doing good. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's put on our tank. Again, plastic threads. Please do not try to manhandle this. Usually I use my fingernail to see, to see if I feel a little gap, then I know it needs to go a little tighter. Once I can't feel the gap anymore, I know it's all the way down. I don't have to tighten it anymore. The O-rings will keep it from leaking, so you don't have to worry about it. Now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and take our juice, and we're going to fill this up. Really quick is that side note again. One of the things that you want to make sure that you have here is you have that ring, that O-ring, in that top part right there. So let's go ahead and put our juice in. <laughs> nice and easy. Do, 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 ding. Done. Take our top. Very nice and easy. I, a lot of the times, will put my thumb over the air hole. If you're confused which one is the air hole, it's the one that's next to the screw for the airflow control. Ta-da! Put my thumb on that so that as I screw this down and it creates pressure in the tank, as small as it may seem, that it doesn't push juice back through. Again, using my fingernail to see if it's tight enough. Another way to see if it's tight enough is you hold it upside down. <laughs> if nothing leaks out, you're pretty much good. So now what we'll do, just one final. Yep, good to go. Now let's see how this vapes. fairly well. Nice warm vape. I hope this um, video was helpful to you. Showed all of the tools that you need to use and just how simple that it is. No need to make it any more complicated than what it is.
and why my phone is doing that, I have no idea. This is the 4.9 clone that I got from our local shop, the Vaporatory. It says, guys, are the bomb. Make their own juice, everything, blah, blah, blah. K-Fun clone. And the purple E-Fest 35 amp battery. Now, this will be very safe for you. Please feel free to uh, contact me if you have any questions. Other than that, our guest, Semper Fi.